Hey, what's going on? Thanks for checking out another video. Uh, real quick before we get into the video, if you can just hit that subscribe button, that would be amazing. And thank you so much for everyone that's subscribed so far. So I finally got a softbox light, which is right here. I got it off of Amazon for like 30 bucks. It took a couple of tries because the UPS driver lost the first one, but Amazon was really great and let me get another one. So here it is. I started this YouTube channel uh, during the pandemic because I had nothing else to do and I had just gotten into film photography and and, you know throughout the year that I've been doing it I've learned a lot I've made a lot of fun videos and you know I've also met some great people and then things but there are sometimes I make videos not just for that I make them also kind of for me for what I want to see on YouTube and a video I'm a, we're, we're going to talk about today's video is something that I haven't really seen many videos out there on but it's something that I've wanted to make a video about for a while and I figured if it's something I'm looking for, then there's gotta be other people out there that are looking for videos like this as well. So this video today is going to be about home scanning with like an Epson V600, which is my primary scanner, versus professional scanners used at places like Bleecker Digital or here in Arizona where I am currently, Tempe Photo. We're going to be looking at both. We're gonna look at the ones that I have scanned and edited and converted with Negative Lab Pro. And then we're gonna look at some from Tempe with uh, them doing either a Nuritsu, but I think for what I paid for, for the scanning for like the regular JPEG, they use an Epson V600 as well. And we're gonna look at the differences between the two photos and really determine like, is it better to just scan at home or should you spend the extra money and have your lab and do it for you? Now I know some people have the advantage of living in a place that has great developers like in New York City it was Bleecker Digital they were incredible incredible people and great at their craft and here it's uh it's Tempe Photo and things like that and some people don't have that option so they do have to scan at home or they send it out to places like the dark room But today we're gonna to focus just primarily on using an Epson V600 at home versus utilizing a lab scanner. So when you get your negatives developed, you have them scan it. So we're actually gonna use the same roll of film for both examples. This is a roll of film that I shot when I was taking photos of my friend Mike Madrid for that garage video where I found a garage and we did a photo shoot in there of myself and Michael. And uh, you know, for that photo shoot, I mostly used this camera, my EOS R with a 50 millimeter FD Canon lens using an adapter on it and got that really good sharp focus, but also that vintage analog feel. I also that day had with me my favorite little camera, my portable medium format camera, my Mamiya 645. And I shot some photos with that. And when I was done, I only had one roll of film to shoot. So when I was done, I was like, well, instead of having to go back and forth to Tempe camera to drop the negatives off, come back, pick them up, take them home and scan them. Let's see how Tempe handles scanning film for me. Maybe I can utilize it more often than any. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go through a bunch of photos, some that I scanned with myself using an Epson V600, my 13 inch MacBook Pro with M1, Negative Lab Pro converted in Lightroom. And then for the lab scans, I know that they're also using an Epson V600 for the lower like JPEGs, which I just paid the, I think it was like 12 bucks to have them scan the JPEGs, which is fine. And they also are utilizing Epson's scan software. So they're not using something like a negative lab pro, which is something I usually utilize. So first up, we're gonna just take a look at these photos and then just kind of compare them side by side and then just go over what my final thoughts are and what I think most people should do if they have the ability to do it. So this first photo that we're gonna go over is Mike sitting on a ledge. And first what we're gonna bring up is the scan from Tempe camera. These photos are not edited by me. These are just straight from their scanner after they developed them for me. So you can see that there's a lot of blue in it and that could just be because of the Epson scan software that they use. Generally the Epson scan software is a little bit more blue. Um, so that stands out to me the most. You can see the blue kind of in the wall 
over here in the corner towards where the shadow starts to pick up. The shadows are very blue and the sky up there is a little bit more teal than I like, um, but it's a much cooler image. And then if we kind of zoom in to Michael's face, you can kind of see that it's, it's very soft, it's very blurry. And now that's something that usually happens with uh, scanners, like flatbed scanners, the DPI isn't always the best, but I did learn that Tempe actually scans at a 300 DPI. The Epson can actually go up to at least 2400 DPI, which is generally what I use it for. And uh, it gives you sharper, better images. You can just see it's very soft, low resolution, almost looks like just like a JPEG. And then there's a little bit of noise in the sky above his head and stuff like that. So this is again, the scan from the Tempe lab that we uh, that I dropped my film off at and used them. I'm not saying it's a bad photo, it does what it needs to do, but I sometimes like things to be a little bit more high resolution and less contrasty. Uh, and them shooting it only at 300 DPI is a little bit of a bummer, but it is what it is. So now let's look at the same photo, but is a photo that I actually scanned myself with my Epson scanner and then also edited with Negative Lab Pro. Now you can see in my image, that it just is overall looks in my mind a lot better. The color is a little bit more balanced. It's a little warmer. I like my photos a little bit more warmer. The contrast has also been brought down so it looks less harsh and less muddy. And then that sky is a little bit more pastel blue, which is what I really like. Then if we zoom in on Michael's face, it's much sharper. You can kind of basically see, you know, all the curves in his dress and all the, the lines and the makeup that they're wearing and everything like that. It just overall looks much better in my opinion. Like I said, that blue that was on the wall is almost all gone. And also it's just a lot brighter, a lot warmer and a lot less contrast, contrasty. So now let's take a look at them side by side and I'll put up on the screen. I'll just give it a minute for you all to look at it. I'll put under it which one is the Epson scanner I use with Negative Lab Pro and then which is the scanner that they use with their Epson scan software. And then finally, instead of going over all of them, this would make this like an hour long video, I'm just gonna really quickly throw up all the photos side by side for you to view. I'll put what's what under it so you can take a determination and feel what you look best with. So that was really just a quick kind of look about, you know, the differences between what you can do at home with your Epson V600 scanner, a $200 scanner, and a $100 plugin for Lightroom for Negative Lab Pro, as opposed to the scans you can get from places like Tempe Camera, uh, other places like that. Now, that's not to say that all places you go to take your film to get developed at are gonna scan poorly JPEGs. Bleeker had some of the sharpest, cleanest JPEG scans I've ever seen in my entire life. It basically ruined me to where I wanted them to scan all my film and I was gonna just throw my scanners in the garbage. And I'm gonna put up those right now. This is from when I was back in New York at Astoria Park. Um, these are all scans done by Bleeker Digital and they just do an amazing, amazing job with their scanners. Now it's to remember they are using high-end like $60,000 Noritsu's and this was being used at Tempe Camera with, my, with an Epson scanner similar to mine. But the point of this whole video was to just really show people what you can do at home versus what you can get done in the lab and you can just see that you can do much more on your own at your home with your own scanner than in a lab. So save that money that you would use for scanning and get a scanner and do it at home. Plus it's a lot more fun.
So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this kind of like shows you what you can do at home with your own scanners and what can happen sometimes when you go to a place that doesn't scan at the highest DPI and doesn't have your artistic vision in mind. Uh, again, this is not bashing on Tempe Camera. They do an incredible job. Uh, they're super wonderful people and it's a great resource to have in Arizona for film photographers. I just wanted to show a different comparison. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed those photos. If you do, leave a comment below. Tell me what scanner you use. Do you use the dark room? Do you use your lab? Do you do it yourself? Check me out on Instagram. Make sure to subscribe. Remember to just shoot and I'll see you in the next one.